what can professional educators do to support the growing number of students who are being raised in concentrated poverty or are experiencing trauma, whether because of their impoverished surroundings or for other reasons? There are many wonderful programs for the poor that address housing, nutrition, mental health, and other aspects of poverty or trauma. However, there are few successful processes available to teachers and administrators to support their efforts to work with children raised in poverty and or experiencing trauma. The Institute for Learning Centered Education has designed a one-year process that focuses exclusively on the role of the teacher in the classroom and the administrator in the school. 63 educators, counselors, and social workers representing 14 schools in seven districts participated in their first two sessions, July 20th and 21st, 2017, at St. Lawrence University. Here is how they describe their experiences during the first two days of this process. New York State Assemblyman Billy Jones launches the two-day event addressing the 63 participants briefly and then spends considerable time visiting teams at their workstations as they create plans for informing their colleagues about strategies for addressing the unique needs of students raised in poverty or suffering trauma for any reason. The uh, feedback that I've been getting from the teachers and the administrators is that this, uh, this program and this uh, seminar is very useful. Um, they're putting together a plan to bring back to other administrators and other teachers uh, to give them the resources that they can use to help better get the children involved and engaged, and uh, I think it's a great program. Tom O'Brien is a member of the Board of Education of the St. Regis Falls Central School District, the Board of Education of the Franklin Essex Hamilton BOCES, and he is also chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Institute for Learning Centered Education. The Institute undertook the, po uh, the Student Poverty Trauma Initiative because although we noticed in the schools that there were trauma sensitive, there weren't too many programs that were actually helping teachers put practical strategies in the classroom to actually do, deal with students who are under this, the, uh, the stress of, of poverty and other trauma. Austin Weekfall is a social studies teacher in the Hewelton School District and a member of the Institute's Board of Directors. This is a double-edged sword to when you get out of poverty like, because she talked about a lot, it's my, it's my people, right? So you, you grow up in poverty, and it's kind of like uh, you, you find a way to get out, but then you, you kind of judge. Because once you get out, it's like, are you really accepted by the group that you kind of emerge into? And at the same time, the group that you're coming away from considers to be basically like a sellout. Like, you, you've sold out, you're better than us. Um, you, you can't really go back. My name is Alan Oliver and I'm principal at J.W. Leary Junior High School in Messina, New York. I brought my team here today in order to really get back to looking at students and what they need to be the most successful in a classroom. We've spent the last decade for sure focused on curriculum and I think along the way we've forgotten who our students are. As our demographics change, our poverty rates increase, it was important to take time to look back at what our students really need to be successful, and that's not always about ELA and mathematics assessments. After two days of working at the Institute, uh, we were able to create a very good plan. Um, we came up with three very solid tasks that we're gonna be able to work on into next year, which I think should help address some climate issues and help not only our students in poverty, but our students across the board in our school. So we thought it was a very worthwhile experience for our team. Marlene Pickering was raised in poverty, raised four children in poverty, and successfully broke the cycle of poverty that had trapped her family for generations. April Charlson is the daughter and first child of Marlene Pickering. April is an English teacher in the Messina Junior High School and has written a well-received book of poems about her experiences growing up in poverty and feeling shame in classrooms with her better-dressed peers.
April is alive today because her mother rejected a suggestion that she have an abortion because in her words, I so desperately wanted just one person who could love me unconditionally. The number one thing you can do is to show them that you care. Know their name. Know what teams they play on. Um, ask them questions. If you see a picture that they're holding and showing a friend, kind of peek over their shoulder and say, oh, is that your new baby sister? Pay attention to them. Come up with cool handshakes. Put their pictures around the room. Think of them as though they're your own children, because they are for those 180 short days. Jason Hubbard was raised in poverty and is currently an art teacher in the Norwood Norfolk schools. The most important thing for me in my uh, K-12 education that kind of helped me get out of poverty was the uh, fact that my school provided resources that gave me hope. Jim Watterson is program coordinator of the Student Poverty Trauma Initiative with Don Mezabov and Dan Dermasich. In addition to facilitating full-day sessions with participating educators, offers expertise on what goes on in the brain of a person experiencing trauma. My main focus is to help our participants become aware of uh, the effect of trauma on the brain and body. Jenny Morrill is a fifth grade teacher at Colton Pierpont. Jenny is a staff member working with Jim, Don, and Dan, conducting sessions on mindfulness as it applies to teaching students strategies for addressing stress while in the classroom or in other aspects of their lives. Jenny is in high demand by local schools for her expertise with mindfulness. I'm Jenny Morrill. I'm a teacher at Colton Pierpont Central School, and I've been using mindfulness in my classroom for two years. I teach teachers how to use it, I teach students how to use it, and what it's done for us in the classroom is created a space where students are prepared for learning, their mind and body is settled, and they're ready to engage in the productive struggle. Angela Weston, Hillary Skelly, and Chrissy Tadaldi are teachers in the Ogdensburg City School District. Each teaches in a different building, and each is here with two other members of their school's staff. We put together the beginnings of our action plan and really focused on um, where are we now, where do we want to be, and how are we going to get there. Um, we've come up with three focus points, um, but the gist of our goal now we've got right down to one word is educating our faculty first. We were given some guided activities that really had us focus on, you know, what are your goals, what are your objectives, and, you know, what's going to help, what's going to hinder you reaching those goals. It really gave us sort of a framework, but at the same time we were given some time uh, to work with our teams. Um, and our team also worked on, on, you know, the piece of educating the staff and giving them some of the resources that we've been privy to these last few days. Um, exciting. Um, yeah, it sounds like even though we're all at separate schools, we're all on the same track because our team did exactly that. We are starting small, like, like I mentioned yesterday. We were able to put things down on paper, which makes it just um, seem like it's more achievable at this point. And um, yeah, starting with faculty and staff and um, creating a positive environment for them, for us. Um, and then, of course, including students, but I think we have to start with the adults, and that will only um, make it better for the kids. Beverly Oderkirk is a member of the New York State Board of Regents and has been an early supporter of the Student Poverty Trauma Initiative. We know as adults, when we're free of pressure and stress, when we're happy, when we feel cared about, we are much more productive and able to contribute to our family, our friends, and our jobs. And this can make a big difference what this initiative could help do for children and with them.